Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and in this tutorial we'll be making the ornamental deer stocking and I believe this stocking is um as, as of this recording it's no longer being made so I was able to obtain at least one before they stopped making them. I'm hoping they bring it back because this stocking is actually really beginner friendly and I really loved putting it together and there's this um the instructions are simple and putting it together was actually rather quick. So here is the chart that it comes with and it gives you a good picture and all of the strands that you need and the colors. And it, as you can see, the instructions are rather short. So um, this is a really great, I think it's a really great beginner kit um, if you ever decide to do one, if you've never done one before. So I'm just opening up the bag here with all the thread, getting out my ring for my thread holders. Um, all the items that I use to make kits are in the description box below with uh, all the links. And um, I like to just go through and make sure I have the needles in here, and I do. And the beads and sequins come pre-sorted, which is great. And we will be using the gold metallic thread. Okay, so we're going to start with um, cutting out the first piece, which is the main stocking. And then um, we're going to use some metallic thread here for these stars. Now, I had such a hard time. Did you see that? Okay, so I had such a hard time starting this star because it was so close to the edge. And if you've ever worked with metallic thread before, it's not very smooth. It's very rough. And depending on... Oh, I should probably <laughs> redo my knot. Okay, so I did this off camera because I had just had such a hard time with it. So I'm just going to show you a different star. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people ask me about metallic thread. And sometimes I um, I, I suggest using a, just a gold embroidery th floss to replace it all together. Because depending on the kit and depending on the um, quality of the felt that you're working with, it could be really difficult to work with. As you can see, you, s you saw I had a hard time with that first star. And the red felt that I'm working with right now is a little bit on the thin side. So I'm just trying to go as smoothly as I can without ripping it. And I'm using two strands of metallic thread. I doubled it over and uh, what I like to do with these stars is um, kind of secure it in the middle since the metallic thread doesn't like to stay put it kind of moves around so I like to just put a little tack down in the middle of the star like this and it makes the star come together like that and I do that with all my stars so I'm just going to go ahead and finish those okay so I finished all the stars and now we're going to work the beads and sequins on top here and I'm when I when I bead and sequin I always use two strands of embroidery floss that's a personal preference the kits only require one strand but I just find that they're a little more secure this way and when these um, beads and sequins are really close like this I kind of use like a variation of the running stitch a little bit I'll kind of show you what I mean so I like to go down and then make sure I go all the way through the back and then I just come back up again like that. That way I'm not, it's like one fluid motion. And uh, you get the hang of it rather quickly and you can bead and sequin really fast this way. When the beads and sequins are more spread out, I prefer to just do them individually and not them individually. But in this case, I don't need to do that, so... That's what it looks like completely finished on the top. And now we're going to use these red and green felts for the toe and the heel of the stocking. And you can kind of see the reindeer's legs there. So I'm just going to cut this out and do the embroidery. Okay, so the lines are a straight stitch. And then um, the stars are also a straight stitch. 
So I'm just kind of showing you my method here. Okay, so, I mean, you can honestly do it however way you want to do it. Um, I decided to do the long lines first and then um, to go back and do the stars on top of it. That way the star, the little stars kind of pop out a little bit, which is what I like. So that is what I'm showing you here. And I do secure it in the middle. I, I do that with all my stars. I just feel like it looks better that way. Okay, so that's what we have, and I'm going to do the rest of them. Okay, so now that all the red is done, now we're going to put the beads and sequins in. Same, um, same method applies here. Um, but notice how these beads and sequins are a little bit farther apart. So sometimes if, I mean, I kind of, I have a rule if it's more than an inch, then I'll knot it in the back. And sometimes I completely ignore it and just kind of go along <laughs> and just bead and sequin each one. So in this case, I'm just showing you how I individually knot and then I just keep going. I don't mind cut. I don't just, I don't cut it. I just keep going and it just saves a lot of time this way. Plus, you know that each one is secure and it's not going anywhere because if you just keep going and you don't secure each individual one, it could potentially get snagged and it could come loose and you know all that stuff so I like to I like to make sure all of my beads and sequins are as secure so that I don't worry about them getting if they do get snagged I don't worry about them getting loose okay oh my gosh this pattern is so cute on this stocking so I went ahead and appliqued the green trim very simple and uh, applique the toe and the heels. Looks really cute. And now you're starting to see the body of the reindeer. Super cute. Okay. So now that we have that on there, we're gonna work on the antlers. And the antlers are interesting. They um, make sure that you refer to the instructions often because there is a certain order that each branch of antler like goes into. So I am just appliquing these two pieces together. That's it. You don't stuff them. They're just appliqued. Another reason why I really like this kit because when I first saw this, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to stuff all those tiny little antlers. Nope. You just... Um, Applique, applique the two pieces together and then applique it onto the stocking. Makes it nice and simple. So, okay, now that piece is done, we're going to put it where it needs to go and we're just going to tack it down with uh, just enough stitches so it doesn't go anywhere. So, I'm using a pin here to make sure it doesn't move around too much because this is a smaller piece to work with. So, I'm just going around. Just kind of how I feel. I kind of feel it out. Make sure I get to the end here and then all the way around here until I feel like it's secure enough and then I will move on to the rest of the antlers. This is basically my method for all the antlers. So, yeah. Fairly simple. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed doing the stocking. So, if you've ever made the stocking, let me know in the comments. Um, this stocking is... Uh, on the rare side so I'm actually making this for my Etsy shop and uh, it was uh, it's already sold so <laughs> if I ever get my hands on another one I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it so same method applies for the rest of the antlers and then we're gonna do um, once the antlers are done then we're gonna go back and I'm gonna add the cute little like I think they're little twinkle lights that kind of flow on top so there's That's, this is how this big one goes on. So make sure you use a lot of pins to secure it so it doesn't go anywhere. Just make sure it's following the lines. 
I really like the simplicity of it. They could have easily added a buttload of beading on here, or they could have added a different element to make it more festive, but they kept it classic, and that's what I like about this particular kit. So I am just securing this where I want it, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to tack it down. Making sure it doesn't move around. There we go. Alright, I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, so now I finished all the antlers. And uh, I made cording for the lights. So that's where all the lights are going to go. And if you don't know how to make cording, I have a separate video on that. I will link it up in the cards up, up on top. And uh, you can follow along that tutorial. It's actually really simple. And, um, once you practicing at the hang of making cording, you won't, you know, curse cording. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've had people be like, I hate making cording. It's so hard. It really isn't that hard, guys. It's not. It's fairly simple. I make cording all the time. And, um, right now I'm showing you how I'm putting it on here. So, um, I like to go back with... A sim with the same color, one strand, and I like to tack down my cording. And this is how I'm doing it. So I'm showing you kind of where I want it. I want the scoop to be natural looking and not like, you know, um, jagged or rigid or anything. So I want it to look like it's draping. So I try my best to make it look drapey. So I'm just tacking this down in the back. You can, uh, what I'm doing is um, I'm doing it each section at a time. Um, you could also put the cording in and then adjust it later, but I found this was more effective for me. Again, personal preference. It's really up to you how you want to do this. But the, um, the tack down part of it is not in the in instructions. So this is just my personal way of doing it to make it look drapey. See how it look, kind of has, it looks like it's draping on each antler. And it's the same. Okay, so um, this part of the instructions was interesting because um, normally you would have the color coded like colors of the sequins for each section. However, there are no like specific colors that the instructions tells you. So, um, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to put random colors on. What I ended up doing was I ended up copying the image that it came with. So, if you want the same result, um, that's exactly what I did. So, I, I used the picture to kind of get an idea of the, like, color order, you know? Because in the picture... Like, the chart doesn't really give you a color order. It just says bead. So, honestly, you could do any color combo you want. So, this color combo, I am um, I am just copying what I saw on the front, like, the picture, that it, the, the colored picture that you get. So, this is what I came up with, and it's so cute. Oh, my gosh. I thought I think it turned out great. If you want to do a specific color for each drape, that's cool. If you want to just do classic green and red, that's great. Honestly, you can get creative with it, but I really liked how that turned out. So, um, the reindeer leg. Fairly simple, beaded sequin with the brown. And um, the hooves. And... Uh, I'm just using my chopstick to gently put stuffing in there. And I'm just going to do a section by section. The uh, small part is a little bit trickier. So, the oh, by the way, the hooves are two-sided. I wanted to point that out. They are not stuffed. So, I wanted to make sure that the legs stayed, like, really sleek looking. So, I didn't stuff them too much. Just enough to give them that 3D effect. 
And I just wanted to show you how I put the hooks in. So I'm just sandwiching it in between the two brown pieces using a pin. And then I'm just going to applique them shut. Fairly simple. And that leg is going to go right there. And it will stick out over the stocking. Okay, so I have that stuffed nicely. And I did tack it down on the back so it doesn't go anywhere. And um, now we're going to do the tail portion here. And the tail is rather simple, no beading or anything. I only tacked it down on the bottom and the tail just kind of, you know, is kind of free for the rest of it. So here's the ear, one of the ears. I'm going to do the inside ear first. And then we're going to add the hooves here and the body. Here's the body, and I fast forwarded through this part because it took me a while. Um, usually, satin stitches, I just, I just, I take my time with a satin stitch because I want to make sure that it um, covers well and that my tension isn't all over the place. Because when you do a satin stitch, the tension is so important. You have to make sure that you're not pulling too tight and that it's not too loose, so that it stacks nicely and it looks full. So this is the method that I chose for this because the, the area that I'm um, satin stitching is a little bit on the bigger side, so I want to make it even, and um, I've just found this was a lot easier to do, and uh, I was able to fill it up rather quickly. So you can do the satin stitch however you want. Um, this is just the method that I chose. And refer to the picture for the the white part on the eye because the dot will be covered up. So just make sure you refer to the picture for that. And I do the same thing with the white part behind the black. And I do the same thing with the nose too. Okay, so I skipped ahead because it took me a while. The rest of the eye, the eye, the white part. The little eye iris is like a it's like a French knot. And if you don't know how to do that, I can also link um, a video on how to do that. And then the rest of the face is uh, outline stitch. Okay, so I skipped ahead doing the little um, like the little saddle on the on the reindeer. And I'm doing a back stitch here with the metallic thread and I'm going slow because um, metallic thread is very finicky and it doesn't always lay the way you want it to. So I, <laughs> I, not a fan. I'm not a fan of metallic thread. I don't know anybody who is a fan of metallic thread. It's very challenging to work with. But just make sure you go slow and you work with small portions. So that's what I'm showing you now. And, you know, my back stitch is kind of all over the place. Oh, well. That's what makes it handmade, right? <laughs> so. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel for more awesome tutorials. I do all these kinds of tutorials. And... Um, I do vlogging here and there, and I do uh, behind the scenes on the, my Etsy shop. I do have an Etsy shop. It's uh, linked in the description box. You want to check that out. Um, as of this recording, Christmas is over, but not for me. Christmas is all year round. <laughs> I've got tons of tutorials that I am going to be sharing with you guys, so don't make sure you don't miss out on those um this i will finish this stocking in another video that i will post very soon so make sure you check that out make sure your notifications are turned on and that you're subscribed and i uh, hope you like this video i'll see you in my next one bye